അടുത്തതായി ഡോക്ടർ സുകുമാരൻ തമ്പിയുടെ ഹോമി ബാബ എന്ന പുസ്തകത്തിന്റെ കവർ പ്രകാശനമാണ് നടക്കുന്നത് പുസ്തകം പ്രകാശനം ചെയ്യുന്നതിനായി സയന്റിസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ സി വി കൃഷ്ണൻ അവർകളെയും ഏറ്റുവാങ്ങുന്നതിനായി ശ്രീമതി അനൂപേഷ്വാര്യ അവർകളെയും ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു നെക്സ്റ്റ് വി ഹാവ് അ ബുക്ക് റിലീസിംഗ് സെറമനി വി റിക്വസ്റ്റ് ശ്രീമതി അനൂപേഷ്വാര്യ സയന്റിസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ സി വി കൃഷ്ണൻ ടു പ്ലീസ് കം ഓൺ ടു ദ സ്റ്റേജ് The book by Dr. Sugumar and Thampi, Homi Baba, its cover will be released right now. The cover releasing will be done by Dr. C. V. Krishnan and it will be received by Srimati Anu Peshwarya. Dr. Sugumar and Thampi Ude, Homi Baba Enna Pustagatinde cover pragashnam aanu, Ippol Nadakunnadu. Pustagam pragashnam shayinnadu, scientist Dr. C. V. Krishnan. ഏറ്റുവാങ്ങുന്നത് ശ്രീമതി അനു പേഷ്വാര്യ താങ്ക് യു മാം താങ്ക് യു സർ ഫോർ ഡൂയിങ് ദി ഓണേഴ്സ് അടുത്തതായി ശ്രീമതി അനു പേഷ്വാര്യ യു എസ് കുടിയേറ്റവും ദേശാടനവും എന്ന വിഷയത്തിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നതാണ് അനു പേഷ്വാര്യ ഇസ് എൻ ഇന്ത്യൻ അമേരിക്കൻ യു എസ് ഇമിഗ്രേഷൻ ലോയർ ഓഥർ ആക്ടിവിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഫിലാൻത്രോപ്പിസ് having founded several non-profits and a Wimbledon tennis player from the United States. Her legal work focuses on immigrant rights, domestic violence, women's rights and children's rights. And she has practiced immigration law before the Supreme Court of the United States, Supreme Court of Washington and Supreme Court of India. She was the first legal advisor appointed by Government of India to the U.S. Embassy in Washington, D.C. She was also former India's number one women's tennis champion. She founded Seva Legal Aid to help victims of hate, crimes and domestic abuse. She also won major international tennis tournaments around the world including playing for India at Wimbledon in 1979. She has assisted survivors from all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mrs. Anu Peshwarya for a talk on the topic U.S. Immigration and Migration. Good morning, young students. Good morning, families who have come all the way. Good morning. I am very happy that the way you all asked questions. Do you know she is my elder sister? Okay, she was more like a mother to me because the age difference was 12 years, 12 to 13 years, I was a baby and I saw her doing all what you were sharing with her. So I, let me tell you a little bit about myself before I start the subject of US immigration. So I grew up in India and I became India number one as a junior tennis player and then I became India number one in 1981. and I played tournaments all over Europe and Canada. And since I used to go abroad every year, I played Wimbledon in 1979 for India and then went on to become a lawyer. <laughs> so it was, it was really incredible growing up because law was at home always being discussed and I became a lawyer probably inevitably. And becoming a lawyer taught me to fight for justice, fight for cases. and I was the legal advisor for National Commission for Women when I took up some cases of in public interest and fought those cases for, for the people. When I went to United States, I saw immigration was the biggest issue that was hitting everybody. I used to go to temples, gurdwaras, mosques and people used to study up and tap, come and tell me the problems people were facing in immigration in United States. And I came to know the hard facts, the truth. So that's how I got so attracted towards immigration as a subject. Now when I see even this ship sailing, I think migration is so normal. We will always go from a small village to a bigger village or to a state and we will keep migrating from one place to another. Since you are all students, it's quite possible that you all might go for masters to United States or you might go through to study in United States or you could go to any other country. I specialize in US immigration and I've been doing this for 40 years now. So are you, any of you interested 
in learning about immigration to United States. If you have any questions, I am ready for a Q&A, but I can give you a little brief about how migration works in America. In immigration, the number one thing is that in USA, there is no point system like it is in Canada. Canada or other countries have different kinds of immigration, which is much easier. So you can always just say that how much education you have, how much of whether you have family there or not, you just add the pluses and then you say you can immigrate. USA, anybody can immigrate. USA has A to Z. You can have so many kinds of visas. So you have to consult with a lawyer or learn what category you fall under. Now, for example, since most of the people are students here, I'd like to ask if any of you would like to do a bachelor's, say, in America, you will want to ask, how can I go? It's a straight away, a student visa can go for a master's, can go for a bachelor's degree, can go for a skill program, you can go to America. There are a number of visas that ap apply for that. You have to know that you don't fall prey to scam people. Scamming and, and forging your documents or doing something like that, because I see people play a very heavy toll in America for these things. I have seen myself, some students from India go through some agents and some agents tell them all wrong stories. I recently helped uh, Indian government from Farmington University when they fell in for the fraud, frauds on such student visas. And then what happened is, it was bad luck for the students because they wasted hard-earned money of their parents which went to America and all their land was sold and the money was sent and that all money was taken by the government and then they were deported. So therefore, when you are going to another country like America, you must know the laws of that country before you go and you must also know what is the law that applies to your particular visa, how you have to keep, uh, keep your visa alive, meaning that you have to see that certain forms you have to fill, whether there's a work permit, are you following the guidelines of that work permit or not. Another way that you can go to America is if your parents want to go. If your parents want to go, if they are doing a business in India, they can, anybody can open a branch overseas of their own company. Once you open a branch overseas of your company, you can send personnel to take care of that business. And that also qualifies. And then your children, whoever are under 21 years of age, get to study free of cost in United States. So there are very many ways of going to America. People go from student visa to H-1B. H-1Bs are for qualified people, engineers and others, but H-1B is even for a dancer, you can get an H-1B. So you have to know how vast is the US immigration system. The Immigration and Nationality Act permits you to get any kind of visa. I would like to have an, a little feedback from you, what kind of visas or how are you interested in studying? Is anybody interested in studying in America? Do you have any questions for me? That would be much better if I feel more interactive to understand how you would like me to explain about the US immigration. Because it's so vast. It is so vast to go. So if anybody has a question of how to immigrate to United States, I can answer that. But when it comes to immigration, there are so many kinds of immigration. A person can get a green card based on just merit. If you are an outstanding person, you can apply under outstanding category. If you are a worker of a health worker, you can go under health visas. There are so many visas in America. I don't think, I'm sure I must be surprising all of you that it is that easy to go to America. It's easy only if you know the law. If you don't know the law, you will not be able to do it. So therefore, try and see, as you are now educating, you're into probably, are you into 11th or 12th grade? 11th or 12th grade, right after this, you can give your uh, SATs and you can give exam and you can go to America. You can study your bachelor's, which is called an undergrad over there. Bachelor's can be done in America or you can do your undergrad and then go for your masters to America. 
So from the student's perspective, the, what you have to do in school is to get an I-20. You apply to any university in America and you pay the first installment of the fees, they issue you an I-20. Once you have that I-20, you go to the embassy in India where it is based in New Delhi, Chennai and Bombay. You are granted an F-1 visa. And if a person on F-1 gets married, his, his spouse gets an F-2 visa, which is a dependent of an F-1 visa, you can go to America right after 12th grade. It depends on which universities you apply to. And those universities, some of them give you a lot of discount and many of them give you scholarships also. So this is how you can enhance your education. You can do courses and there are also M visas which are for skill sets. So if you want, want to go on a skill program, you can go again to America on skill programs. So I encourage you and I would like to tell you to go to the website and learn more about US immigration and see what are your chances of studying. You may want to do an undergrad, you may want to do a master's, you may just want to do a course or your parents are doing business already and you want to get into family business. Like yesterday we were even looking at Ayurveda here. Ayurveda is a huge prospect in America, huge prospect and alternate medicine is encouraged in America. So any Ayurvedic center from here can open a branch in America and once they open a branch they can send Ayurvedic doctors, Ayurvedic technicians, Ayurvedic massage therapists, this is all allowed. So I don't think many people are aware about this kind of a policy. So if you have any desire to go, that is the way to go. And as far as I'm concerned, I've done so much on immigration and so many different kinds of cases. You can, you can understand that 1% in the world people get this extraordinary visa, extraordinary ability visa, which I got for myself in the United States. That's how I moved to the United States. Being a tennis player, playing tournaments all over, I was already invited to America, but when I filed in less than 15 days, I got the green card approved because they want somebody who is extraordinary, who's done something. So that is how you have to find your own niche, which category you fix under, and that's how you can learn to go. So I encourage you all to read about immigration, and if you have any questions, I'm willing to answer if anybody has an interest of how to immigrate to United States. Do you have any questions? Good morning, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, congratulations first for being that extraordinary person. Now, not everybody are as extraordinary as you are. So maybe uh, like what we have uh, off late, what we have heard is that it is very difficult to continue there in US. Though even those who have uh, graduated there or gone there for a post-graduation course. And so we see a lot of migration from US to Canada. Yes. Uh, saying that that is much easier, it's easier to settle down there. Yes. And uh, what is your view on that? And another thing, uh, you said uh, some um, people who uh, the student approaches for guidance are misleading them. Now, how do we stay away from that? Certainly. So let me answer the first part of your question. Why a lot of people are going to Canada? The reason is that Canada is easier, but Canada takes a long time. So once you apply for a position, you could be waiting up to eight to 10 years for your time to come, or sometimes it is closer, maybe five to six years. Whereas United States gives you the option of coming on an immigrant or a non-immigrant visa. So non-immigrant visas is almost instant. Like you, on a student visa, you can go to America and study almost instantly. On a H-1 visa also, you can go instantly. <coughs> you can apply in the month of April when it starts. Now April season is coming for H-1B, 65,000 H-1Bs will get selected, 20,000 more will get selected for master's programs and they will all be able to get uh, immediate uh, entry. Canada is not immediate, Canada, Canada people go to get green card because eventually after a long time they think that green card is going to be difficult in the United States because the company is either not sponsoring them or some other reason. But 99% of people who get into a job profile who are working there, their companies sponsor them for green cards. 
and it's it's not an and immigration is not just employment based anybody who's running a company can do their own green card also after 2 years you show that your business is in is profitable minor profitable they get you you do file something called an i140 and you can get a green card after running your own company for example ayurveda can open their own company and after one or two years they can get a green card so in america gives you the options of coming almost instantly i mean waiting time may be 6 months 5 4 months on an average that's all and the second part of your question what was that ha huh? ha misleading that has been a very big problem because unfortunately there are no licensed lawyers in india who give you advice on immigration even i have been asked to come and speak on so many forums where there is an investment of 1 million dollars 1.5 million dollars 2 million dollars i don't like to go to such places because i want people to know that there are so many kinds of visas that you can go to it's a choice if you want to go to the investor visa so student student visa is another place where they will tell you about a university and they will tell you that if you go there to study you can still work in a gas station in the evening or you can still go to a, uh, a place and uh, you know get cash money on a restaurant by working they will tell you but those are the not the terms of the visas when they are not the terms of the visas you will be soon exploited so so many people go there with the thinking that they can earn money on a student visa and study you can't do that you can do that only in the final year of your program and that also it is related only to your education so if your education is related to arts or if your education is relating to math or something in the university program you can only work which is on on a in the university most likely is only place you can work so you must know the uh, parameters of your visa before you go so i would suggest not to fall prey to anybody who gives you wrong advice research on your own and best way is to consult a licensed lawyer in america not an agent you ask the agent is he licensed is he a lawyer because license means a, a lot in america it's it's that no lawyer will give you wrong advice this much i can tell you because they are licensed officers of the court and they have to speak the truth unlike a lot of lawyers i would tell you that a licensed lawyer will not speak tell you the lies so you must do your verification you must do your programming before you apply for student visas in america and apply for programs in america so education is another industry which is in america which is big they will find you universities here and there because they get a commission on the where you get admission so that commission is a very big thing and they will all tell you lots of false stories so that is becoming in india it is it it is prevalent so you have to be careful that's a very good question any of the children have any question for studying abroad <laughs> my sister said boys are not communicative <laughs> any questions or the teachers have any questions Good morning ma'am I'm Krishna from Sri Gokulam Public School my question is what are the document required for US visa what are the documents that are required are your uh, school uh, completion certificate they will ask you for an evaluation to be done overseas because they want to see that you passed your 12th grade 12th grade is okay for an undergrad and for a masters program you require four year degree So if you've done 3 years master then you have to have 3 more years of experience to get one more year of credit. So either you do that program for masters and for students they require just your 12th grade mark sheet and you require to do the English passing TOEFL exam before you go that's all. And once you get admission in a college they will give you I20. I20 is a form when you deposit and you get admitted to the school. So you apply your I20 put all your passport and all the documents and your birth certificate that you are genuinely who you are so there are about these 8 10 documents that go in for a f1 visa and then you apply at the embassy they want to see that you have your parents have 
the capacity to pay for your education. So they might ask you who is going to support your education. So if there is no money in your parents' banks, that will be a drawback. So they, they, they do in the interview want to see if, which program you are going for. If your undergrad program is $30,000 in a year or in three years, your parents should be able to show that much money that they are able to give to you. Because you can't go there and become a state liability unless you have a scholarship. So people get Fulbright scholarship also. So then you can go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I know I have US immigration is a subject I don't think many people. I've gone to places, even big companies where they start, even they have not much knowledge about US immigration. So it's a very new subject for people because they don't know. So if you want, you can go to my website. It's called by my name anupishavriya.com and you can find um, a lot of visas being discussed and start reading about US immigration. This is your age to do it so that you can see if you want to pursue going to America. Does anybody have any more questions? Thank you so much and it was wonderful to come all the way from United States to be with all of you and it's only because of Mr. Ajay and my sister who brought me with her. I'm very, very grateful to be here and very pleased to see the village prospering so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, this was Mrs. Anu Peshwarya. On the topic she spoke, US immigration and migration. Let's give a huge round of applause for Mrs. Anu Peshwarya for this wonderful and informative presentation at the International Pirivanam Village Festival 2023. So before we move on to the talk by Dr. Mukesh Kapila, we request Dr. Kiran Bedi ma'am, Dr. Mukesh Kapila sir to please come on to the stage so that the teachers and the staff of different schools can take a photo session with you. Can we request both of you to please come on to the stage? We request all the distinguished dignitaries, Dr. Kiran Bedi ma'am, Dr. Mukesh Kapila sir, Mrs. Anu Peshwarya to please come on to the stage. So these are the students of Bhara Bhavans Vidya Bhavan. Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan school teachers and students are taking a photo with eminent personalities, Dr. Kiran Bedi, Dr. Mukesh Kapila and Mrs. Anu Peshwarya. Thank you, ma'am.